Hello guys, it's been a long time coming, but I am finally here for episode 2 of watching Gary Barlow music videos for the first time, for songs I have of course not heard. And we are starting off with So Help Me Girl. Let's get right into it! You could have kissed me like this wasn't gone last. Kept me from saying something I'll never take back. You could have held me like there was no chance. Of Of every dream I've ever had So help me, girl You've gone too far It's way too late To save my heart The way it feels Each time we touch I know I've never been so to wonder if all of those backing vocals are Gary. I feel like I'm hearing a woman's voice in there, so maybe not. Those vocals are so tight. Sounds great. However, this video is bringing up a few concerns for me. Well, mainly one concern. Why the heck is he canoeing when it's so dark out? Like, I understand that he wants this girl to save his heart, but he also needs to save his lungs because if something goes awry and he capsizes, he's gonna be dead. We don't want that. Obviously, he's alive, so it's all good, but still, still. And I can help myself, so help me, girl. Oh, yeah. Gotta help me, girl. I am loving these R&B influences I'm hearing. You had to be there until the song. Specifically with the keys. Making last night feel like a vision of things yet to come. You just got to hold me like nobody else. Look what you've got done. Nice. Love me. That was a very pretty run. And speaking of very pretty. I am definitely staring, respectfully, but there's something about this late 90s Gary with the middle part. Well, is that a middle part? I don't know. Close enough. I haven't gotten a great look at him in this video because it's so dark out, <laughs> but it's light enough out for me to still be crushing, so it's all good. Oh, now we're just in the middle of traffic. I hope he's insured. how he sustained that note. I'm definitely hearing some female vocals in the background. Is he trying to get himself killed? What the heck is happening? This is serial killer stuff. Ooh. 
both, but I am loving this part of the song. Gary, I love you, but this is no time for burying your head in someone's boobs. You're in danger. You're in danger. I follow him on Instagram and he seems to be having a great time drinking his wines, putting the finishing touches on the next era of Take That, which I'm super excited for, so I'm fine. But I still did not need for him to put me through that. I love Gary and respect him too much as an artist for him to do such stupid things. I will not allow it. In all seriousness, I enjoyed that song, though I suspect I will love it even more in a live setting, and I have seen that he has a few live performances of it on YouTube, so I will definitely be checking some of those out. I thought the music video was fine, it's what I would expect, but what I did not expect was the outro of the song. Oh my gosh, that was heavenly. And I love that it kept building even when it started to fade out. And to end this on a shallow note, I'd like to thank Gary for wearing that tight t-shirt. Mm -hmm. All right, next up is Open Road. <laughs> Strings, okay. Where is this gonna go? My life is extraordinary bad. I fought the fear and chased the pain. My life doesn't need to be explained. I chose to walk the line as one. I expected a beat to drop. I did not think the drums would be this loud. Just leave that car door open. Alright. I'm also impressed by the bass on this track. Okay, we're walking in traffic again. Whatever. Is this 
slight gospel influence there with that organ and the choir. Okay, so I have pretty mixed feelings about that track on my initial listen. I absolutely loved it lyrically. It's a very self-aware song, and it seems like he was talking about his journey of becoming the man he wants to be. I especially loved that line, drowning in my autocratic ways. I think that perfectly explains the whole song. You know, when he reached the low point, he started to drown in his autocratic ways, and he wasn't proud of that. And I love that the song changed in tone towards the end, with the slightly altered lyrics. But sonically, I was not the biggest fan of it. I thought the chorus was fine, but I just couldn't really get into the verses. All right, next up, for all that you want. very sweet song so far, and I'm already kind of vibing with it. However, I'd be lying if I said it didn't kind of feel like a boy band song to me. And what's ironic about that is it's reminding me more of a Backstreet Boy song than a Take That song. <laughs> that just came to mind, so I thought I'd share. Also super excited about the return of T-Shirt Gary. Of course I am. Oh, nice background vocals. Bridge is probably my favorite part of the song.
All right, so I actually really enjoyed that song, and you guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that song is from the 12 Months, 11 Days album, and I believe that's the one he's always referred to as being the album he's not too fond of because of all the unfortunate things that went wrong with his solo career at that time. That track did feel a little less Gary Barlow than usual to me. However, I still loved it overall. It just worked for me, sonically. Loved his vocals on that track, and again, the bridge was my favorite part, by far. All right, lastly, we have Stronger. Hey. A minute. Why am I suddenly in a gay club? What just happened? You know, what's so funny about the sound of this track is I'm not at all shocked by what I'm hearing because Gary's a professional at writing dance music. Anyone who's been a Take That fan from the beginning would know that. Of course, I've been going through the Take That album, so. <laughs> Yeah, this is so wild. But let's see where this goes. By the way, some of these synthesizers are reminding me of William Orbit, who is one of my favorite producers, so that's a compliment. Again, I hope he's insured. Oh, people are going to be late for work. Oh well. This is Linnea Sharples from Live and Direct TV. Good night. I don't know about you, but that guy's really made my day. <laughs> same. Same. Well, lyrically, that was another 
uplifting song. And I just did a little research on it. Apparently that music video was shot in Vancouver, and that's the reason I looked it up. I was very curious where that was filmed. Also, they apparently had to use a rain machine to film the video because they were expecting rain when they were supposed to film it, but when the filming started, the weather was the complete opposite of what they expected, so that's kind of funny. And I also read that Gary objected to that song being released as the first single from the 12 months, 11 days album because of the dance beat, and he thought that wouldn't be popular amongst his fans. And guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I enjoyed that song a lot, as well as For All That You Want. I don't know if I should feel bad about that or not, but I don't. I just thought they were both great songs. And I am definitely looking forward to watching a few live performances of Stronger. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not surprised that one worked so well for me because I was a huge fan of the early Take That music. I'm an electro pop slash dance music fan at heart, and it honestly makes me laugh because that's not Gary's preferred sound, but he's so good at writing it. <laughs> he's so darn good at making dance music. In fact, he's just as good at it as writing R&B ballads. The range this man has is insane. Well, in terms of songwriting and vocally. My immediate favorites from this group would have to be So Help Me Girl and For All That You Want. But again, I was really vibing with Stronger. I'll have to give that one a few more listens. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.